All right. Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we start a new study in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And um, 2 Timothy, um, if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, um, okay, my Facebook feed is messing up again. All right. Anyway, if you um, look at my question, what would you do? What would be on your mind if you were facing death? Okay. Think of. I want you to think about it. What would you do? Uh, what would you do if you were facing certain death? and you knew you were facing certain death, what would you do? Um, what would you do? And that's important because um, this t Paul, if we look at the book of Acts, the, the close of the book of Acts, Paul would have been around this time finishing his first imprisonment and um, he would have been let go during this time first timothy would have been um written first timothy and titus and that's why i studied that's why we i went through first timothy and um titus together because they really was written around the same time titus was written I mean, uh, Second Timothy was written um, later, just a, a, few, a few years later. It is believed to be Paul's last, <coughs> excuse me, Paul's last letter. Um, it is believed shortly after this epistle, he is ex executed. Okay. Um. All right. Um. Like I say, I. It seemed like. Um, it seems like my Facebook page is acting up again. That's that's coming from Facebook, just so you all know. So what I might do later on is just kind of take the recording of this and then put it back on the Facebook. Put it uh, back on the Facebook uh, page, okay? Um, because it's, it's acting up like to like every. It's interrupting every whatever. I don't know what's going on. That's fa that's on Facebook end. Okay. Um, hey, Carolyn, how you doing? God bless you. All right. So um, also, let me just do a, a quick trivia. As I told you, we studied First Timothy and then Titus. And the reason why I did that is um, one of the ways that the Bible, when you look at our Bible, and this is on a scholarly end, not so much as a inspirational end. But when you talk, think about just the sections of your Bible, then in each section, the books are arranged in order as they believe to be, as far as the date is concerned. So if you look at um, your first section from Genesis to uh, Esther, I believe it's Esther, those books are laid out in the order in which they would have been written um, and then the next section would be uh, Job uh, Psalms Proverbs uh, and I think goes already to Songs of Solomon and Ecclesiastics again those are written in the order in which they would have been uh, written the writings of the prophets Okay, and, and of course, what they did was they, they break them down into major and minor um, prophets. I don't agree with that, and here's why. Um, Isaiah would have been the earliest of the prophets written, about 120 years or so before the Babylonian conquest, okay? When you look at the minor 
uh, when you look at the minor profits, um, the minor profits would have been um, all except for the last three books. And um, let's see. Yeah, I know. All right, let's see. Periscope is going on and off. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I, all my feeds are going bad here. I'm going to get a better thing here. All right. Uh, my Facebook seems to calm down. All right. All right. Let me see. I might just try to do something here. All right. How you doing? Uh, 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 correct me if I'm pronouncing your name right. It's Vir, Vir, Virgin, Virgin Netta. Okay. All right. So, all right. Um, okay, random. Uh, what when you say Timothy or Paul? What do you what do you mean, Timothy or Paul? All right. And um, also, let's see, Titus. Titus, uh, Carolyn was one of Paul's disciples, like Timothy. He was tasked to oversee um, Paul's work on the Greek island of Crete. And um, Timothy was tasked to oversee the work at Ephesus, the city of Ephesus, which you see uh, the church of Ephesus. Um, uh, oh, timely on Paul. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. So um, let me, I, I, I'll finish that because I was just getting kind of brief over view of what one of the why I had um, um, why when I studied Titus with first Timothy because that was timely when you come to the New Testament the New Testament is uh, the same way the Gospels are arranged in the order of what they believe that the uh, letters are, are been written as far as the date is concerned when you come to Paul's letters the same thing Romans going all the way through Romans all the way up into again Timothy and Titus second Timothy <coughs> excuse me second Timothy would have uh, is is believed to be Paul's last letter um, Philemon could have been written a little later or at the same time as second Timothy and these letters would have been written from prison and Paul um, in First Timothy, when you look at the book of, e, of Ephesians, um, Ephesians, Colossians, and I believe Philippians is believed to be one of his prison epistles, but that would have been the first imprisonment. And as I said, he was released for a short period of time, and then he would have been re-arrested. And it's also believed that he would have been executed around AD 65. That is kind of the belief. Um, what a lot of people believe that his execution and of course it would have Paul being a Roman uh, citizen he would not have been crucified but would have been beheaded unlike Peter who was believed to have been um, uh, oh okay <laughs> yes uh, but unlike Peter Peter is and this is this is not from the biblical text but um, you get a lot from history and what um, I guess some of the things that were said during the time that people wrote about um, so whether it's reliable or not we really don't know but it's believed that Peter was when it came time for him to be executed we know that in his second epistle that he was urging he was telling his audience that he was writing to that one of the reasons that he was writing was that um, um, he was he was writing to um, um, who is Fieldman? I don't know who that is. All right, but um, and she was saying Peter. I'm saying Peter. But anyway, Peter would um, he felt he said he felt his death or his execution was pending. 
and um, was really coming near. And what was foremost on his mind was he wanted to make sure that the church and the believers had the word of God, the scriptures, the truth left behind. Now, P Paul, um, as he's writing in the second epistle, as he is, um, as he, um, no, we're going to go to Second Timothy. I'm going to put it up in a moment. Second Timothy, chapter one. We're in Second uh, Timothy, and Paul, feeling that his, feeling that his, um, death was pending. And this is interesting because this is what I put in the description. What would be far most on your mind, Paul? Pretty much, as we will get into this letter, uh, pretty much knew he would be executed. Um, and, and again, so what you see in this letter, as opposed to First Timothy, which is a habit of what you can see that this, this was sort of a, a characteristics of Paul's writing. We saw this in First Corinthians. Chapter after chapter was instruction, and of course, in the Corinthians case, more rebuke and correction. But then when he comes to the second epistle, he lays out his heart to them. And the same thing with Timothy here. Uh, he's laying out instruction to Timothy. Well, now Paul is going to really lay out his heart. Um, he's going to uh, lay out his heart uh, to Timothy, and especially knowing that his execution um, is upon him. Now, remember, Timothy was a timid person. Unlike Titus, Titus was a go-getter. And Titus is going to come up in this letter in a very, very interesting way. But um, Paul was probably closer to Timothy than anybody else. Timothy had the heart, that Paul, uh, uh, the same heart that for the gospel, the same heart for the people, the care of the people. Um, than anybody else it had the same heart and um, but Timothy was also a weak kind of person and, and timid and, and, and Paul was aware of that that he didn't want people pushing Timothy around he didn't want uh, you know he didn't want them to say hey you know what uh, so he, you're going to see he's going to be encouraging Timothy to be strong in the grace he's going to be encouraging Timothy you know don't don't let anybody despise your youth Remember from where your, your your calling came from, who called you, and all of these things. You can see that he is um, um, going to be, he's going to strengthen Timothy with his message. All right. So in Second Timothy chapter one, he says, "Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by God's will, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus," and <clears throat> As I always say, if you think about the very opening statement, it always sets the tone. Um, he 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 sets the tone of the epistle. And notice he says, "For the promise of life in Christ Jesus." Why? Mortality is upon him. He 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 is aware death is his execution is coming soon. Verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly loved son, meaning his, this, this, you know, he mentored Timothy. We see this back in Acts chapter 16 where they met. Timothy's father was Greek, but his mother was Jewish. So he was uh, half Jewish and he was half Greek. He says, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, and even <laughs> I said this before. Even though this is a standard greeting, notice what comes from the Lord: grace, and then, and, and in the case with the pastoral epistles, he says mercy. So grace and mercy for pastors, right? For ministers, grace, mercy, and then peace. So grace, remember God's unmerited favor. It is God's goodness towards us, God's willingness to do us good. And um, it is also, then you could say, what is the favor? And really the favor is whatever it is God wants to do for us. In the case, 
when we say we're saved by grace, that's salvation. But here, this grace is the strength and the power of God resting upon us. The strength and the power of God resting upon us to do God's will, to do God's purpose. And that takes the form, that grace is, you can say, whatever it is we need. And the word peace, and this word peace is, we often think of times peace of the tranquility of the soul. Um, and yes, as in the book of Philippians, he says that um, this, the, the, the peace of God is the path of all understanding. But that's not what he's talking about right here. He's talking about the peace we have with God that is based upon the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that's why in Ephesians, he says, Jesus is our peace. He is our peace. Now that's important to realize because if you think, and many theologies teach this about when we talk about the security of salvation, eternal security, you can even throw in the phrase, once saved, always saved. But here's the point, the, the, the answer to those questions, you have to say, what is our peace? Who is our peace? Upon what basis do we have peace with God? And Paul is mentioning this to say, hey, peace, and notice this, this is what comes from God. If you are uh, condemned, even if you are wrong, even if you are in sin, we all are. It's just, it's just, um, it is just that we, some sins we esteem more than others. In other words, if, 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 um, and I'm, and I'm not talking about a person who is hard nosed in their sin, defiant in their sin. That's a whole different category, even though peace would still be for them. But remember, that's a category, a, a person who rejects God, who rejects Jesus Christ, who's defiant. That's a different category. But people who struggle with their sin, struggle with their issues. Here's the thing, what I'm saying peace from God peace um, hi we uh, we are in the letter of second uh, Timothy verse by verse second Timothy and we're in chapter one um, so and I want to say uh, nail I hope I pronounce your right your name uh, correct I don't know I'm not for sure um, but anyway, so this, so when he, oh, when he says here, um, uh, to Timothy, verse two, to Timothy, dearly beloved son, grace, then mercy and peace. And then he says, from God, the father in Christ Jesus, our Lord, from God. So mercy and peace comes from God. And this is, should be a strengthening, uh, this should be strengthening to us, comforting to us. Uh, verse 3 says, I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. Now, of course, uh, again, this was something that Paul was really concerned about with Peter. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Paul was concerned about with Timothy that um again he he was <laughs> um and you can see this with this letter how concerned paul was notice he says praying night and day verse 4 remembering your tears i long to see you so that i may be filled with joy clearly recalling your sincere faith that first lived among your grandmother lois and then your mother Eunice, and that I am convinced is also in you. Now, um, again, when you go back to the book of Acts, what you will find, and, and now we see her name because her name is not given. And by the way, this grandmother, that there were, that Timothy's mother um, was Jewish, but also a believer. His father was Greek. Um, and it also appears that his father may not have been a believer. We don't know. Paul is certainly 
pointing out that Timothy, uh, at this time, how the, 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 the Christian message had even reached far into, again, Antioch. Um, and this is, you know, so Paul, you know, having known his mother and his grandmother, took Timothy under his wing. Now, again, Timothy had a great heart. But he he wasn't as strong of a person. He wasn't as he wasn't as strong, and um, um, you know that he should have been. That Paul at least and Paul was aware of this. Um, so he says, um, verse four, remembering your tears, and I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. Clearly recalling your sincere faith that first lived with your grandmother Lois, then in your mother Eunice. And that I am convinced is also in you. Verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to keep ablaze the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given you a spirit of fearlessness, fearfulness, but of one of love, I mean, one of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Uh, we see the context in which now. Paul writes this kind of famous scripture. People quote all the time, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Of course, the context here is that he's speaking to, 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 to Timothy because Timothy was fearful. He was a timid person. Uh, Timothy seemed to be a person that was very well aware of his inadequacies. And what Paul is doing here is not pointing out his inaccuracies. In other words, Paul is not pointing out, you know, yeah, you, 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 you're weak. Yeah, you're, in fact, by the way, not only was he weak, but he also, we, we see that Timothy uh, seemed to have been a warrior to the point where he might have had ulcers. Remember back in the first letter, he tells Timothy to... Um, he tells Timothy to um, drink a little wine for his often stomach problems, okay? And of course, that goes against a lot of people today in certain circles, but we won't get into the issue of whether or not you should drink wine or not. But um, the idea here is uh, when he says that, okay, Timothy was so aware of, you know, he... And I could probably imagine a conversation that you know, you know, you know, you know, Paul, I'm not, I'm not cut off for this, you know, I'm not, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. And 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 why Timothy himself probably would list all of his inadequacies. Paul is strengthening him um, with God's word. So he says, I, I therefore, verse six again, I therefore remind you. Keep ablaze the gift that God, the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, when he says the laying on of hands, this was referring to Timothy at his consecration. Um, we don't have a recording of this. Again, you know, the book of Acts wasn't meant to be a complete biopic of Paul's travels and experience. So we get a lot of details scattered through the other epistles and this is one of these examples we know that paul when he took timothy under his tutelage he had him circumcised um because at that point he wasn't circumcised and there was and really i don't even know why paul had him do that but i, I i'm, I'm going to say that paul probably did it to try to keep um he didn't do it because in order to be saved but probably did it to say, let me let, let me try to cut down on a lot of the resistance. Um, and, you know, we could judge for ourselves whether or not if the wisdom of that was sound. We know that uh, later on when Paul again attempted to do that, it led to his arrest in Acts chapter 21. But anyway, Timothy, uh, having been coming under Paul's mentorship and this kind of also shows you this is really what church should be about what when remember he he told paul instructed timothy and titus you know you are to instruct people take the young men instruct them 
um, the ministry is more of an apprenticeship than it is an academic. Um, theological schools came along later in Christian church history. Uh, the development of these schools. Um, in some cases, they were good, but it, it wasn't because of a... It, well, eventually, it became a denominational thing. Um, theological schools were f to be trained in a specific theolo the theology. Uh, doing the oh, six seventh centuries when you probably begin to see the development of Christian school theologies, okay? And by then it was more Catholic than anything else, that they want you to be trained in a very specific way. Of course, when you come past the um, uh, Reformation period, the breaking away from the Catholic Church, each denomination developed their own theological schools because they wanted to train the ministers in their own theology. Now, while in essence, that is a good idea, um, the problem, of course, is, is you, it, it, the word of God, in its sense, wasn't the central part. It was theology. In other words, so a Baptist is going to be trained in a Baptist the, uh, theological thought. Presbyterians in a Presbyterian uh, theological thought, so forth and so on, with all the different denominations. And usually what is left out, of course, is the Bible itself. If you go, well, what does the Bible itself say? And then you're trained to look at Scripture through those theological lenses. And now, of course, today is you really almost can have really kind of no movement. Uh, in other words, if you want to be a pastor in a lot of these denominations, you must have a theological um, degree and does and, and does that theological degree mean your call if you play a good enough game um, if you play a good enough game in other words you say the right things you say you know you can get into if you it, it, look at if you play a good enough game and if you have clout and or money you can get into any theological school any one of them money more so then clout. Then, of course, you learn to say, pick up on the lingo. And that is why today you have all of these ministers who have degrees falling from the faith, falling into sin. Look at what, you know, just we can just list on The list is literally, uh, <laughs> the, the list is literally <laughs> too long. When you think, think about what's going on with Liberty Temple right now. Okay, think about what's going on with Liberty Temple, which is a theological school. Just if you follow the headlines. So the idea is that um, if so, if you, again, if you want to move in, the, in denominational circles, you have to have that degree. But anyone can move in those circles. What we see with Paul is, and this is the pattern that was set that you come under a pastor um a good bible teaching church where the pastor is overseer or if you want to go to elder rule okay um timothy in a sense wasn't called a senior pastor he was he oversaw the work at ephesus and possibly even the oversaw the work in um, maybe Colossians and, um, and and in a couple of churches in that region. But specifically, we know he was set to make, to oversee the work in church. But it, it, again, the designation of senior pastor, that necessarily wasn't because he was to organize the elders. And in the body of elders, as Paul lays out, they oversaw the spiritual um work, the spiritual well-being of the church, the teaching as well. Um, but what, however, I think, way, whether you, if you have like today's designation of senior pastor, that's, that, I don't think that's in and of itself the issue. 
but a good Bible teaching, right? You teach people. You teach them the word of God, not theology of men, but the word of God. Now, pastors are also able to oversee that, totally able to see. And this is why we see what Paul says here, that um, he tells them now, you're able uh, uh, verse 6 again therefore I remind you keep ablaze the gift of God that is in you by the laying on of my hands so this idea when Paul when Paul is encouraging Timothy he says you one the, you, you know the gift what God has called you and as the overseer he that Paul would say look I, I'm I'm able to co-sign on this. I'm able to recognize what God's God's hands on your life. And when they consecrated, when they consecrated um, um, Timothy, it was a group. Now we see this back in 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 the first epistle that not only Paul laid hands on him, but a group of elders laid hands on Timothy, meaning that they recognized the gift. That God had on Timothy and thus um, and, and this is this is in this is this is important too because even when you look at Paul's ministry and you go back and one of the reasons why we see certain things the way they happen how the Holy Spirit had laid out things and this is just for example you go back take Jesus himself Jesus shows up and John looked at him and go, behold the Lamb of God. Now, why was that important? John was a certified prophet of God, right? He shows up and he says, that's the Lamb of God. Jesus gets baptized. God himself speaks from heaven. And just, everybody heard this. Speaks from heaven, said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So now you got two witnesses. Jesus is the son of God. Then you have Jesus works, right? The miracles, all of these things that we now say, this is the son of God. No one has ever done the works that Jesus had done. He is the Messiah. He is the, um, the, the, the son of God. And by the way, three different times, God spoke from heaven, validating Jesus as the son of God. Then you had the John the Baptist and of course his miracles. And of course, being raised from the dead. Then you have the apostles then who come after Jesus ascends into heaven. And what do they do? They were with Jesus. People go, those people, those men were with Jesus. In addition to that, what, what do you have? You have their miracles, right? You have their miracles that validate that they were with Jesus. Now, just on a sidebar here, when the Pope says that he's the vicar of Christ, that he is the successor of Peter, I would go, where? Where is the succession at? So now we have, a few years later, the Apostle Paul comes along, and guess what? He gets knocked off a horse, and Jesus says, I'm calling you now as an apostle. And the one thing we know about Paul was that he stood equal with the 12 apostles, and he never shrinked away from that. Now, it's important because Peter himself testified to Paul as an apostle. The 12, who were the original apostles, right? They testify to Paul as an apostle of Paul, that he is an apostle of the Lord. And of course, Paul's own miracles and works testify that he is equally an apostle. So when you have these kind of witnesses, then you have Paul, of course, now laying then hands on Timothy. Um, it, this was the credibility. This was the credibility. Okay. And so Timothy had a very rich. Uh, and by the way, people, we were, we're, we're just as egotistical like anybody else. John Mark very, is a good example of this. John Mark who deserted Paul and which eventually ended up causing Barnabas and Paul to split. That, that, that's a very interesting story in that because God never called uh, Mark to be a part of it. And my point of saying that they never should have split over John Mark, but they ended up splitting. 
Um, but Mark was, he was royalty. His mother Mary, everybody came to Mary's house in, in the first century church. My point is the same sort of thing that they do. The same, we always, we always, uh, you know, um, people back then were saying, hey, you know, look, the Peter and him, he was with Jesus. He was one of the original. And so we would have that sort of hero worship, you know, that admiration as well, whether it's right or wrong. But my whole point is now Paul is reminding Timothy. He's reminding Timothy, you know, you keep ablaze the gift. Remember, Timothy would probably shrink away from it. He would probably have to shrink away. So he says, keep ablaze the gift that is in you through the laying on of my hands. And then he says, for God has not given you a spirit of fearfulness, but of one of power and of love and then of sound judgment these are the things that rather than look at your inadequacies look at what the gift that God has given you what in power or by his grace and that's how he is strengthening Peter all right guys we're gonna stop there I'll pick it up with the next uh, pick it up with verse 8 no 7 and our next statement uh, I'll pick it up uh, sorry about that I'll pick it up um, where am I going to pick it up at? Uh, verse 8. Yeah, I'll pick it up at verse 8. Probably come back to verse 7 uh, in our next study. So, all right, um, all right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next study. All right.